The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning here at 5 a.m. Good to have you with us on this Thursday morning. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. Today is the day we're going to begin that intense heat wave. Yeah, today is a pinpoint weather alert day as we're going to see some extreme temperatures in the forecast and it is only going to stick around for quite some time. Kevin Troy joining us now with a look at our forecast as we see the triple digits and those extreme temperatures. Yeah, well, there is some good news out of all of this. And uh, yesterday we actually uh, didn't hit 100 degrees. Uh, we actually hit 98, so we did get some relief. Let's talk about the watches and warnings for you right now. And you can see the excessive heat warning in place until 9 p.m. on Monday, and that is for all areas of Kern County. And uh, well, grab your ice cream cone and eat it fast. Uh, Alex loves this graphic. We're looking at 106 sizzling hot this afternoon. What does that mean? A lot of melting ice cream. So uh, make sure you uh, get it quick and uh, don't uh, stay outside too long. I want to show you outside. The sun is slowly coming up right now and 76 degrees. A calm wind for us right now. And as we take a look at the day, you can see we're going to warm up pretty quickly at 10 a.m. 89, 100 by 1 p.m. and by 4 o'clock, 105. Out of the uh, Tehachapi area, the sun is slowly coming up and we're going to show you that camera coming up in just a few minutes. We've got 66 degrees on the temperature of west wind at five. And guess what? Maddie's home. Well, she's not going to get a break today either. Look at these temperatures. Upper 80s by 10 a.m. And then we're in the 90s as we progress into the afternoon. I'll have much more on this forecast coming up in just a little bit. First, back over to you. All right, Kat, thanks so much. Two key issues are unfolding in Washington today. The withdrawal of American troops in Afghanistan and a push to ensure voting rights. Tracy Potts has the latest. Hi there, Alex. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. President Biden gets an update from his national security team on Afghanistan before speaking publicly today. The White House says he'll talk about the pace of the withdrawal, security, and humanitarian issues. President Biden last night, just hours before he gives an update today on the drawdown of U.S. troops from Afghanistan, the Pentagon has turned over Bagram Air Base. Does it just feel like a, a ghost town? It almost feels post-apocalyptic. Critics argue with the Taliban gaining strength, it's too much too soon. After today's speech, President Biden turns his attention to voting rights. He and Vice President Harris meet with civil rights leaders. The motion is not agreed to. After the Senate failed to consider legislation and the Supreme Court upheld restrictions in Arizona. We want the White House to cooperate with preserving people's right to protect their right to vote. The Texas legislature meets in special session today to consider a law that eliminates drive through and 24 hour voting and requires proof of identity on absentee ballots. Our objective is very simple, and that is to ensure that every eligible voter gets to vote. All citizens have the right to vote constitutionally. It is their right. What we are seeing are examples of an attempt to interfere with that right. The Justice Department is doubling staff in its Civil Rights Division to fight state efforts to restrict voting. And we'll hear from Vice President Harris today speaking from Howard University, her alma mater. She's expected to talk about expanding Democrats' effort to stop voter suppression and flip Republican seats in next year's midterm elections. I'm Tracy Potts, 17 News. 17 Crime Watch now. We now know the name of the suspect in an hours long standoff with deputies in South Bakersfield. It began just after 11 Tuesday night. The sheriff's office says they got calls about a man shooting a handgun while driving erratically on South Fairfax Road and Red Bank Road. KCSO says they eventually found the suspect, 25 year old Francisco Vidrio Gutierrez, inside a home on Via del Mar near Shirley Lane Elementary School. A standoff ensued with Gutierrez eventually arrested early yesterday morning on suspicion of shooting at an inhabited dwelling, negligent discharge of a firearm, resisting an officer and making threats. Three people were wounded in a shooting in East Bakersfield Tuesday night. 
The Bakersfield Police Department says just before 10, it received a shot spotter activation in the area of South Kern Street and East 10th Street. When they got there, officers found a woman with a gunshot wound. The department says two more victims who had been shot arrived at the hospital. BPD says none of the injuries are life threatening. Anyone with information is asked to call police at 327 7111. Meantime, the Kern County Sheriff's Office is asking for help identifying two people suspected of stealing a car. Here's a look at those suspects. KCSO says the theft happened back on May 12th at the Southern California Edison building at Mills Drive. Anyone with information can call the Sheriff's Office at 861-3110 or secret witness at 322-4040. The Bakersfield Fire Department says it seized 500 pounds of illegal fireworks over the 4th of July holiday. This in addition to the more than 4,000 pounds of illegal fireworks seized by the Kern County Fire Department. If it doesn't have a safe and sane mark on the on the firework, we don't want to have uh, citizens light it off. The department says fireworks that explode in the air can cause embers to rain down, sparking fires. And that's exactly what happened this weekend as BPD or BFD responded to 15 structure fires. The Kern County Fire Department has launched a section on their website allowing to the community to report illegal fireworks in your area. The online tip is uh, or the online tip form is available at Kern County Fire. Dot org. You may remember earlier this week we told you about a 16 year old boy in Bakersfield who lost his hand while using illegal fireworks and we've learned of another boy who suffered the same injury during the 4th of July. The family of Angel Vega says he was celebrating the holiday on Sunday in early March when he set off a legal firework that had a short fuse. The 17 year old was taken to a hospital in Delano before he was transferred to one in Fresno. His hand had to be amputated, and he has another surgery set for tomorrow. 507 now, a litter of puppies is recovering in the care of a Lebec area animal shelter this morning after being found abandoned in a South Bakersfield neighborhood. The pups were found on, by some mailboxes on St. Helens Avenue near the intersection of Pajaco Road and South 8th Street. Six of the dogs were able to be taken to the shelter for care, but one died. The puppies were taken to the shelter on Hill uh, a shelter on the hill humane society in Lebec because local Bakersfield shelters are full. It, it really breaks my heart to think that they don't have a place to go. You know, um, I know that there are a lot of people out there who are willing to help these dogs. It's just trying to find out, you know, who to go to, who to talk to in order to help these dogs. Bakersfield Animal Care Center says part of the reason shelters are currently so full is due to an increase in runaway dogs following the 4th of July holiday. So make sure to check the shelters if you lost your pet. For sure. The embattled Fairfax School District Board is set to meet today as some board members face recall campaigns. Last week, the head of the Kern County Elections Division approved a petition to recall three trustees on the board that allows recall organizers to start collecting signatures. They need to collect more than 1,500 valid signatures by September 26th. The recall campaign is aimed at ousting Fairfax School Board President Palmer Moland and the school board trustees Jose Luis Tapia and Alma Rios. Local synagogue Chabad of Bakersfield is providing residents a chance to learn about the horrors of World War II from someone who lived through it. They're holding a Zoom event today with Dr. Edith Eva Egger, a Holocaust survivor. In 1944, Dr. Egger was sent to Auschwitz at age 16. She endured unimaginable experiences, including being forced to dance for the infamous Dr. Joseph Men Mengele. The virtual event, a conversation with Dr. Eva Egger, the ballerina of Auschwitz, starts at 6 p.m. Dr. Egger is now an acclaimed psychologist, speaker, human rights advocate, and a New York Times bestselling author. Tickets for the event are $20. To sign up or find more information, go to KGET.com. Clinica Sierra Vista is now offering rapid COVID-19 testing and COVID-19 vaccinations. Call 833-278-4584 to make your appointment. But don't delay. Clinica Sierra Vista, putting patients first. And we're back here at 521. A moment of silence was held at the site of the Surfside condo collapse last night as the rescued effort becomes one of recovery instead. First responders, public officials, and religious leaders gathered around 7.15 p.m. to pray for those who lost their lives when the 12-story building collapsed on the night of June 24th. The bodies of 18 more victims were found yesterday, bringing the death toll to 54. Officials say they'll continue their search until every body is recovered. This morning, about 86 people remain unaccounted for. Former President Donald Trump announced he is suing big tech companies, including Facebook, Google, and Twitter, 
During a speech at his golf course on in New Jersey, Trump said he is leading a class action lawsuit against the social media giants because of bans imposed on him and other Americans. The former president said the suspension of his social media accounts are an infringement of his First Amendment rights, and he plans to seek punitive damages. Representatives for the tech giants have not commented on Trump's announcement. Police in Minnesota are asking for the public's help finding a vehicle involved in a highway shooting that killed a youth baseball coach. The victim's son in the car as they drove home from a game. Megan Fitzgerald reports. A manhunt underway after the latest casualty of gun violence. A youth baseball coach shot and killed on a highway just outside of Minneapolis. This was one of the most tragic events that I have witnessed in my 20 years in policing. The Armstrong Cooper Youth Baseball Association says Jay Boughton had just left a game with his son on Tuesday when police say a suspect in a light-colored SUV opened fire. Boughton losing control of his vehicle, crashing into a nearby parking lot. A tragic scene that's all too familiar. Nearly two months ago in Southern California, six-year-old Aiden Laos was killed on the highway when a passenger shot at the car his mother was driving. Now another community grieving. Um, it, was a, it was really, truly a senseless act that resulted in the loss of a human life. A life that meant so much to so many. Boughton was a father, a mentor, and friend. Now, as a community mourns, police are searching for clues to catch a killer that's on the run. Megan Fitzgerald, NBC News. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. We're back here at 526, and now to the price you pay and the rising cost of groceries. Even stores are now stockpiling in anticipation of big increases in food costs. Here's Kristen Dahlgren with what you can do to save. From bacon to bread, strawberries to cereal, food makers say prices are up and supermarkets are stockpiling to get ahead of what could be the biggest price increases in recent memory. Lack of labor and the oil prices and the increasing demand. So it is a kind of perfect storm that we haven't seen before. In the past year, the price of white bread has jumped 7%. Chocolate chip cookies up 11 percent, bacon prices jump 19 percent, and strawberries will cost you almost 22 percent more than a year ago. AWG, the nation's largest grocery wholesaler, recently bought 15 to 20 percent more inventory of many packaged foods. The idea is to keep prices lower on those items and keep consumers coming to those retailers. Does this mean we should be stockpiling as consumers? I know that there is the impulse to do so, but we saw what hoarding did in the past last year. And when there's less on the shelves, yes, prices are going to go up. Instead, experts suggest saving money by making your shopping list ahead. Check store circulars or coupons, join loyalty clubs, and buy store brands. Kristen Dahlgren, NBC News. And out of the ongoing housing prices in Bakersfield with skyrocketing rents and mortgages pricing many out of the market. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, about 384,000 people live in the city of Bakersfield with more than 17,000 apartment complexes. Yet the search for an available place to rent remains a challenge. Everything from the pandemic to Los Angelinos moving north for reduced rent prices has affected the lack of availability in Bakersfield. According to the Wall Street Journal, it would take the United States five and a half million additional units to recover from the housing crisis. That's 500,000 units every year for the next 11 years. One of the biggest drivers of the uh, housing supply shortage is because of the pandemic and people being able to work from home. Uh, we got people coming in from LA, Sacramento, San Diego, out of state even. And if they are moving in California and want to get out of the big cities, but stay in California, Bakersfield is one of the top places that they are going. During the pandemic, we saw rent prices drop to historic levels in places like L.A. and New York. But here in Bakersfield, rents were increasing by almost 2 percent. Some developers point to the rising price of lumber as a roadblock for new construction. Experts say proposed Senate bills 67 and AB 571 will lead to improvements in supply sooner than expected. Officials are warning some Fraser Park residents to avoid drinking tap water due to an, increased, an increase in nitrate levels. 
The Fraser Park Public Utility District says water samples were taken early last month and found dangerously elevated nitrate levels. The utility company says the parent says parents should not give water to infants under six years old and or six months old because high nitrate levels can interfere with the blood's ability to carry oxygen and can lead to serious illness and even death. It also says pregnant women should also avoid tap water and anyone with health issues should consult their doctor before taking a sip. Fraser Park residents are advised not to boil the water as it will not help reduce nitrate levels. We reached out to the district for further comment, but have not heard back. 17 Court Watch now. A Kern County jury has convicted a man of murder for a shooting that took place at a smoke shop last year. 34 year old William Blowhart Lee was found guilty of second degree murder and other charges in the killing of 49 year old Jerry Tibbs Jr. The shooting took place June 3rd, 2020, outside a smoke shop in the 700 block of Kentucky Street, where Tibbs worked as security. According to prosecutors, Lee, reportedly a dropout member of the Country Boy Crips, became involved in an altercation with Tibbs and other members of the rival East Side Crips in the days before the shooting. Lee faces more than 50 years to life in prison at his August 4th sentencing. David Palms, one of the inmates who escaped Lairdo Jail back on April 28th, is scheduled to appear in court today. You may remember Palms and Tyrone Johnson were awaiting trial for the shooting death of three-year-old Major Sutton when the two broke out of the facility. Palms was caught hours later, but Johnson evaded capture for nearly two months. Palms faces several charges stemming from the jailbreak. He's due in court at 9 a.m. Wasco Mayor Alex Garcia says he expects to be exonerated over a DUI charge from last month. I look forward to sharing the lesson of my experiences with my peers and my community upon resolution. Until then, I retain the right to a presumption of innocence. Once legal proceedings are behind me, I will address the situation and comments made this evening. Two Wasco City Councilmen, Tito Cortez and Vincent Martinez, said during Tuesday's council meeting that Garcia should resign as mayor, although not necessarily from the city council, because his case represents an unwanted distraction for city government. We are starting to report this morning that one of Kern County's best known attorneys has passed away unexpectedly. Timothy Lamucci, who participated in some of Bakersfield's most memorable trials, died yesterday while out on a casual bike ride, according to close family members. Lamucci, who began his practice in 1966, was involved in more than 250 jury trials, including two of the city's most notorious, that of tire store owner William Robert Tyak accused of killing two of his neighbors in 1982, and offered Rollins, the Wasco star athlete accused of killing his girlfriend in 1991. Bakersfield attorney David Conan of the law firm Chain Cone Styles worked with Lamucci for 20 years when the firm was known as Chain Younger Lamucci. A, a very giving person. I mean, Tim was involved in a lot of charities here in Kern County, um, and I mean, he he always cared about the little guy. Well, it was Lamucci was the son of Italian immigrants who founded the iconic East Bakersfield restaurant Luigi's more than 100 years ago. Lamucci, who was 81, is survived by his wife Margaret, daughter Lisa, and a large extended family. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.